Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the evolution of consciousness, and that is why I have my guest here tonight, Nayi Murez. She is a student and a practitioner of magical passes, the Castaneda work. We'll talk about the difference between men and women, because there is an energetic... There is and there isn't, and that's the beauty of it. Right. Because at the level of the energy body, we're, we're all the same, and dependent on what your belief system is, you might have had many lifetimes as both, or right. who knows. Carlos talks about cyclicity, so it's beings that are on parallel lines to us. We can access each other's awareness. Uh -huh. So you're accessing, in your family, there's males, females, okay. So, right. But in, just energetically, when we're in this human form, the female has a womb. Right. And some people, also, if you don't have a womb, you have still the energetic structure, so it's the same. But y you have the womb, okay, and for the seers of Don Juan's line, the organs of our body have a primary purpose and a secondary purpose. The, the primary is the to give birth to life. The functionality. The, the, phys functiona the physical function. And the secondary purpose the is... The secondary the purpose is dreaming or ah. perception. So, and if you look at the primary purpose, when a mother is... Um, has a baby growing in there, yeah. she's dreaming. The baby, right. it's still dreaming. Right. But it's not only the mother, there's a father and the, and the family, the tribe, the, all the people behind them. Yeah. So much goes into that birth of a human. So the womb but is also a the, yeah, vehicle the, for dreaming. The womb is a vehicle for dreaming, and the female has the natural connection to that. Right. And, and I, I can tell you in my experience, um, <laughs> There's a lot of layers to this. I remember Florinda would tell me I would get too much in my head because uh -huh. we're trained as women. Okay, we think the power is the male paradigm so you that's been there. Your okay, womb. so I got to be really, I got to sound really smart because I'll get attention from that. Uh, that's power. She'd be like, ask your womb. She'd be, ask your big barriga, you know, your stomach, your womb. Uh huh. That's a different consciousness that receives. So that's not so much about putting out. It's, it's but the, the intelligence of the womb. Yeah. If you ask that, what does it say? It's, it can say many things, but it will say, for example, um, take a pause, <laughs> let that person finish talking before you interject. Mm. Or it will say, take a walk right now. Mm. But men don't know? have that. Men don't have the womb, but what they have, uh, it doesn't mean that women don't, men don't have that direct access. Well, they just go about it differently. But women are more intuitive that way. They are, but the, here's the challenge mm -hmm. for women. Um, they take it for granted. They ignore and it. Even. They Sometimes. Yeah. Not every woman, not all the time. But w the tendency is to take it for granted. And, and Don Juan said that's not innate, that tendency. It's socialized. Right. That women have learned to be indifferent. They've learned to tune out. Oh, and appear like, I don't, if I'm intelligent, I won't get a good mate. If I'm not thin enough, I won't get a good mate, so I'll starve, and I can't think, and I can't feel. Right. But I'm thin, so I got a good mate. For example, right. okay, we've been socialized to be a little bit, um, no, we're not all embodying that, but that can be a tendency. Um, there are men that are socialized, okay, it, it's better to look good than to feel good, remember? <laughs> Darling, you look marvelous. <laughs> so there's, we all have all these traits, and, and, I, and what Carol Teeks would talk about is that it's a spectrum. Uh -huh. But on the male end of the spectrum, you have a certain stability. The female is cycling, and her awareness is cycling, right. so we will have openings that come right before, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what you call the you know, moon time uh -huh. or menstruation. There's an opening. You, you, you know things directly, and you suddenly you, you, you and might And women have ignored that. S not all the time. No, but a we lot of women... We wouldn't be here if they totally ignored it. We wouldn't have survived uh -huh. as a species. But we, when it's at secondary level, and it's not rational or not something I can explain to somebody next door who's super rational, we might, no, 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 that's just silly. Or like you get a, something as simple as bring an umbrella. The sun's really bright. I'm not going to bring an umbrella. Right. It's ridiculous. I read the weather forecast and it's pouring down rain and after I, I didn't right. listen. Men get that as much as I women do. Get I do get that. Yeah. 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 But the male has a steadiness energetically. Uh -huh. They have a stability. And they do mm -hmm. have a dream image or a dream vision that mm -hmm. comes in. Mm -hmm. My experience also just with 
le leading workshops and magical passes and integrity practice, the men value it so much. They remember every detail. They follow every directive that they got from it. Somebody will come and tell me a dream, and I, I, I think, oh, that's interesting. Did you have that last night? It was like, no, that was five years ago. But it was like it was yesterday for the man. Mm -hmm. And the woman, a lot of times it'll be, oh, yeah, I had two of those last week. But what did we do with it? Yeah. So what we have is we can come together. The male has that sobriety and the steadiness. The male is what Florinda would describe. They're trying to cone toward knowledge. Right. They're building on knowledge. They're building to a point. And so right. you'll hear in the conversation, get to the point. And the female is ranging. She goes this way. Right. So she's ranging. She's looking for the, the, la the feeling in the... Yes. But the female in the male is doing it. We all have the male and female insight. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'm going to be like, let's get to the point, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's practical. And sometimes it'll be like, can we broaden out the view and look at the bigger picture? So males and females will do both. It's just tendencies. But just energetically, their body, energetic bodies are slightly... They have these tendencies, but mm. you'll see people that are energetically mm. maybe more what we call female who are in a male body. Mm -hmm. You will see the f more masculine, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful. That's called diversity, and that's how we get creativity. That's how that's tensegrity. We what, get what is all tensegrity? This tensegrity is a is is all the it's the modern version of the practices that. Uh -huh that we're um, engaged with. So it includes the magical passes, it includes dreaming, it includes um, silence, mm -hmm. it includes a recapitulation. And it's, Don Juan told Carlos, you, you, this, tr you, this tradition means being of your time. So we're never going to do it. Of your time. Be of your time. Be aware of the time that you're in. Uh -huh. And you want to make your practice something that will function in your time. So yeah. Carlos, in, Carl, in Don Juan's, in the lineage before, for example, the magical passes were each student had different ones and they didn't share with each mm -hmm. other. And it was maybe done in secret, they didn't bring it out. And Carlos and it, Carol Teagues and Florinda Donner, Tysha Abelard, they saw, you know what, it's time to bring, in our time, we need mm -hmm. these physical movements because we're urbanized, we're sitting in chairs, planes, trains. We need to get mm -hmm. this But Don Juan also said this was out. the end of a certain time. It was the end of his lineage. And it is the end of but it, you're part of the lineage. Well, it's different. It's not, th Carlos was a, what they call the last no wall. Yeah. Because I, that was a certain function. It operated, um, they were not in the public, they weren't sharing these teachings and all but that. But Carlos brought it out. Carlos brought it out because that was, he became very clear to him. It was a choice. Well, Don Juan told him to. Um, I mean, I he, think he told, told him, him to keep he writing. He actually told him to, yeah. He had mm -hmm. all these notes, and he was hoarding his notes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and he had, he said he had codes in a safe with mm -hmm. a elaborate, you know, right. protection plan. And Don Juan said, that's, you know, you're getting fixated. He said, D take your notes, write a book. Right. Put it out there. And um, he wrote a lot of books. So that was the beginning being of his time. And then at a certain point they saw, well, we need to bring out the mm. movements also. Well, that was progress. way later. It was though. later. But so, but getting back to Don Juan, what do you, I think he does dis disappear. I mean, I think he dissolved with that fire of awareness. I mean, what do you think? I mean, according to the books, like. Uh, yeah. That, but is that. He and, a, and, a, and his party of Sears, they left in that way. They left they with left. their body. I yeah. mean, some people I mean, would call would that ascend. Yeah, and they would say it was like a plume serpent, lights on a yeah. serpent. They made this. But Carlos change. didn't lead that way. Carlos left a different way because he left alone. But he also was maybe, this is just my judgment, mm -hmm. had too much self-importance to actually, but. I th I'll tell you. Tell me. I hear you. But um, that was I, just what I get from Carlos other people. Carlos and self-importance didn't seem related okay. to the person that I know. Carlos was anything but self-important. Carlos. If anything, Carlos might have erred on the side of being too giving. Uh -huh. And what he said, and he knew that about himself, so that was already factored in. Um, he couldn't stand seeing a being in chains. And he, uh -huh. he said for uh, him, the more his perception expanded and the energy he had, he would see that humans were in chains of, what about me? Right. They did it so to me. How did Mommy he didn't smile at me, he smiled at my sister. So what happened? How did, well, he died, Castaneda. He Carl. died. He didn't. Uh, I wouldn't say that it was an ordinary, random 
Were you there Death. with him? I wasn't physically oh. present when he died uh -huh. in the room. I was connected mm -hmm. with him. We all felt it. I definitely felt it. I, I had a dream. Uh -huh. So I saw him in dreaming, very specific dream, which uh -huh. <laughs> it's beautiful, really, because we were practicing tensegrity movements called not doings at right. the time that he was leaving. And there was a mat and there he left and there's a mat there, like this <coughs> open blue mat. It was almost like, now practice. I'm mm -hmm. going, but you're connected mm -hmm. and do this practice. So I had that that image right at the time. Mm -hmm. You felt that, that. That, well, yeah, it was a very clear dream. I think I was actually a dream. I'm asleep and I, you so that was, and he, but he also said his, uh, his, um, see you soon. So it wasn't so much goodbyes. He said that to everybody. He knew that he was leaving. Oh. He stretched his time out. Something was coming to take him. When I met him, well, not the first time I met him, but when I started to work with when him. When was that? In the early 90s when I, w mm. I met Florinda and then I met Carlos and he was pointing to his left toe. It's and he told me he had just been to Mexico City the week before and oh. this blue energy was coming Mm -hmm. onto his toe and he had to jump in the bathtub and because it was going to take him and he, he was he could have just been taken like that with the blue energy w and it would have taken him it would have been like Don Juan uh -huh. leaves that way his decision was to say he's like I'm not done yet I want because he really didn't feel like with the books that he had written that it was complete yet he hadn't provided a clear structure to practice the tools and that's mm -hmm. where tensegrity came in this term from Buckminster Fuller right. that has to do with tension and integrity Tiny that yeah. we're organized by the flexible, there's a flexible web that organizes almost any structure that you could look at in the universe from a cell to the solar system. So he, so by jumping yeah. in the bathtub, he stopped that energy. He stopped it, and he did that a few more times. He stopped uh -huh. it. He held it off as long as he could. But then at the end, he... At the end, Don Juan told him, you know, you have another option. What was it? Which would be, there's different ways to go, you know, and mm -hmm. we all... and. Ultimately, it's about how we are here. Well, isn't you know, it also but, about how activated your energy body is? Yeah, into well, going trust into this? me, Carlos is, n nobody could keep up with Carlos. I believe That's that. That's a very activated energy body. He wrote four, three books in the last year of his life. Yeah, no. I, I, and, I, I, and, and, and set up uh, structures and reorganized his whole garden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Set, uh, no, you know, sure. it was extremely he conscious. Was an amazing person. Extremely conscious to part, you know, and, and not about his ego or himself. Right. I never saw him do. All right, well, that's good to know. I never saw him do one thing that I would call self serving. He was, in some way, he would say, I'm not here. Wow. I'm not here anymore because he wasn't, it wasn't about being out of it. His just the mass of his energy had already gone into the I energetic. I appreciate you saying that. He was in the energy body. Yeah. And honestly, I know, you know, we would sometimes see him and it'd be like, is, was that his energy body or was that him, his uh, physical body? What about Florinda and Tasha? What happened to them? Uh, Florinda and Tasha made the decision when Carlos left, um, and it was a conscious, Car Don Juan would say, you can leave. Right. You, set, you know that it's time to go, something's pulling you, and you just, you're upright. Mm and you go. Mm -hmm. you, your intent takes you out there. Um, that's how he did it. And there was, you know, he actually did burn. There might be little residues of things that were left, but he, you know, so. Castaneda burn. Yes. Uh-huh. He, there, so, but, but, but he has a death certificate and there, right. you know, but Some of this gets outside of this, you know, it's like, how do we, we translate go, this? No, we, let's go you know? outside. I don't have to fit into, like, the yeah. normal, like, but uh, I don't, it's, I don't it's, care. It's, it's, how it's do you okay describe it? Weird. But there, there would be, there were little residues, and that's what they cremate, but the rest of it, he burned. He left. Oh, so he did burn. So. I mean. Uh, as I understand it, there's some, some burning that he goes and then there's some residue of the body, like almost like a snake uh -huh. leaves a something behind. Now, uh, Tasha and that was, cr that left behind part was cremated. And the Tasha and, and, and Florinda who were- Tasha and Florinda made the decision at that time that it's time for them to leave the public eye. It's time for them to leave uh -huh. the where they were living and all that and go. So they're still around, floating around somewhere. They're around somewhere. They're not public. directly involved with us. I've like I said, I feel them present. 
But Did they, they go back to the house in Mexico, maybe, that was so magical, or? Uh, that is a possibility. But? I, my sense is that they would move on into something, they would move forward. Into another to dimension, another, sort of? Well, the definitely they're dreaming, and um, uh, they're the traveling. They, they, uh, when they left, they <laughs> took all sorts of travel gear. Travel, with them. I mean, physical travel. Yeah. Here. So they yeah. uh, that was like ninety eight. Like they left then, huh? Mm -hmm. that was like they left at the same time. Carlos, there's a choice and a decision. Um, Carol Teeks chose to stay and help, sort yeah. of a second ring of beings who were there. To uh -huh. <coughs> it was like it hasn't quite. We haven't quite gelled. What is this practice? And <coughs> that's yeah, what still. Rennie and I, uh. at that time, it was. Con it was still. Our understanding of it definitely is and it's still always evolving. Gelling, it's always evolving. But yeah. it's sort of about what I get from all those Castaneda books. It's about there's so many other dimensions right here. With yeah, the dreaming, right. if we shift our reality, we can enter these non ordinary states without drugs, you know. Right. And when we do that, isn't there something about the non ordinary reality empowering the um, theater of infinity? Absolutely, because yeah. Talk you're about taking <coughs> you're taking the scene with the taxi driver or the business meeting, yeah. <coughs> the ordinary, the ordinary scene, yeah. <coughs> and you might have your habitual reaction, and you think that's your only choice, and you bring in this other awareness from the energy body. How do you do that? The dream body. Well, f first thing you do is intend it. Okay. You call it. Okay. So you can even just call it, you say, energy body, I want to be more connected. Right. You know, and that's the part of you that's connected to everything. Is there a pass you can do to sort of actually? Any of these passes, the, the ones we were doing, that that, uh -huh. that focuses you uh -huh. to be, a, um, it attracts the energy body. Uh -huh. And I, I talked to you about that, like Carlos would say, if you're kind of out of it, he would make a joke, he'd be like, your energy body's in China. <laughs> you know, and then you get a little more present, ah! It's coming! It's coming! It's in Chicago now. You know, we're in, and this is my, from the perspective of LA. So if we're in New York, yeah, it's in Paris. It's uh -huh. getting closer. <laughs> you know, and um, then he would laugh. You know, it's a, it's on Westwood Boulevard now. It's coming closer, or you know, it's on Fifth Avenue. Right. It's almost here. Uh, but it's, it's just how present are we, and right. how, how, how much have we acquiesced in some way? to let ourselves connect to the bigger thing rather than try to assert the, the little yeah. fish. But know? there's so many so magical passes, right? There's yeah. like hundreds. Why so many? Why not just, if it's just about that, why is there, so, what do all these other passes do? Well, they do, every, there's, uh, you name it. Like, like there's what? passes for dreaming uh -huh. that help you what would get be a in that pass state. for dreaming? A pass for dreaming, really simple. Yeah. You could do while we're here or you, if you stand, you know. You're yeah. This is oh that w and you do that before you dream. You definitely can do before you go to sleep at night, yeah. or if it's you just want to open up your perspective uh -huh. on something, you know. This is and the idea that I'm moving the assemblage mm -hmm. point. It's here, and I'm actually Throwing getting it, it to the future. I'm getting it to uh, lodge out of its fixation. There's passes for silence. Mm -hmm. There's passes so that help you inhabit these other life forms. Oh really? Like what other life forms? <laughs> The tiger, the butterfly. You can inhabit those. The whale. Things. Well, ancient shamanism, people would, shamans would turn into birds or, right. you know, and you're still hearing stories now. Um, we have a friend that's in the International Federation of the Red Cross. He was in the Philippines and there was a dog coming in mm -hmm. to the compound. Everybody said, that's a, that's a shaman dog. Mm -hmm. And they were all like, not going to deal with it. And they were trying. So it's still alive in places for Don Juan and that tradition that takes an enormous amount of energy to actually become the uh, the dog or the butterfly or the crow. Mm. So uh, they opted for what they thought was a more a wise use of energy, go into the perception of it. I don't have to shift my body to mm -hmm. a butterfly. I can shift my perception. And you practice oh. the butterfly and things are lighter and you sense lines of energy more because mm -hmm. that's the butterfly's world. Yeah. I don't I can't tell you with any kind of absolute certainty what it is to be a butterfly because that's the butterfly's realm, but we can take a glimpse. Yeah, you can move in a sense. And then you know, back to theater, that gives me that brings that broader perspective into the the little simple day to day so actions. What has all this done for you? I mean your personal 
journey story like? What has it done for me? I, uh, when I, um, when I started Sensegrity, I was looking for something. I had uh, read the books of Castaneda, had briefly met Florinda and Carlos, and then I met Florinda again at the, and at the mm -hmm. Sisterhood bookstore, um, she told me Carlos has some movements. I said, that's what I'm looking for because I had been looking, I had been studying uh, poetry, English literature, creative writing, just finished to graduate school there, but I was what Carlos called burnt out. Uh -huh. It was like, you burnt a candle. And, uh, burnt I out had, how? Mentally? Uh, mentally, emotionally, energetically. Um. I, I, you know, um, was, and it was the way I was obviously living, taking experience. I was somehow believed that I was supposed to be amazing. So I tried to, <laughs> you know, how? it's just that I, well, for me, it's, um, I th I'm supposed to be the smartest uh, uh, kid in the room or whatever. That was your uh, um, energetic. Yeah, it was trained. really an ideality, an idea. Uh -huh. So you're not, for me, that takes a lot of energy. That's going to consume energy. Yeah. Also, I had a, f um, a beloved family member, my brother, had died mm. a couple of years before, and I was kind of sp spinning from that. That all sense of orientation wow. was completely shattered so from out and something like that. Yeah, and it's a, a lot of times you'll hear those stories that will be when a light comes, an opening. Right. And I actually felt I was in graduate school, and there was no, nothing was working. I had finished. I was in Boston, and I had finished a school, and I was looking to find a job and a place to stay, and nothing would work. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of, I had been, I got involved, you know, my, I would try to escape through romance. That would be my way to try mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. check out and, right. and deal with the pain of grief of a loss of a family member. Okay, let's get some disastrous romance <laughs> drama going. <laughs> so I was just all this soup of stuff, and but I'm supposed to be an amazing poet, but I'm too busy with this drama mm -hmm. to actually really do that much. So that's the soup, and I feel myself in my little room in an apartment in Cambridge. I feel this buzzing, and I feel my energetic sphere. Now I didn't, I did have the terms because I had read them, and it was like a blue, sort of blue violet, kind of buzzed through my uh -huh. whole being, uh, seemingly out of nowhere, and then I knew what to do. Which was? Go to L.A. And study with Castaneda. I didn't know Castaneda was in L.A. But you... I just, just knew to go to L.A. Oh, I'm not supposed you, to be here. Because you felt your fe the felt the feeling. Well, I had family here, so... Um, and I just felt uh, go west. And I met Florinda within a week again. I didn't know she was there. There was in the L.A. Times. She's going to speak at the Phoenix bookstore. She's speaking at the Phoenix bookstore about the recapitulation. Mm -hmm. Then the next night... Mm -hmm. And now you've been yeah. a student for over 20 years or something. Yeah, right? started in 90, formal study in 91. Wow. So 23 years. Wow. And It'll be exact, you know, like it was in the fall. So, so what do you want to do? We, I mean, you're a teacher, one of the main teachers, right? Mm-hmm. And then where's it all going? Not Well, for everybody. I mean, well, what's, the, what's yeah. really exciting is yeah. that we have, um, we've just opened up a video library where people, you know, you can ha have a membership Online, uh, online, and we'll and we have we'll keep adding series of movements, so people can b build this into their day, and it can be a complement to whatever they practice already. If you practice meditation, mm. you practice silence, you practice yoga. So, how many online magical passes will there be? Right now, there's like this month we just put it out right at the equinox. I think there's seven or eight series on the first month, mm -hmm. and they'll c that'll continue. Things that have already been videotaped, and then you. No, uh, well, we. We're, that's what we're doing, is What's taping the them and putting it out. It's www.cleargreen.com. Cleargreen. Cleargreen.com. You can also find it at castaneda.com. Uh -huh. But we also have um, uh, about 150 uh, teachers in training. The first group graduated uh -huh. uh, last year in so, Italy. But I think what people don't understand, this is not about exercise. This is not about, uh, what, what, uh, this is about something else. The magical passes are doing energetically something to these this spot they um, are yeah. it's moving your energy first but it also i mean it's you can exercise. that can be your exercise it can be but also, it's not about but it's that. not about you know tightening yeah. Yeah. you know your abs or whatever although a, f a, a healthy 
-hmm. vehicle is part of the part of what right. we need to be awake. So it will address, you know, getting the lymph moving. Um, right. ha what am I doing with my eyes? Am I am I tiring out my eyes? But that's also mm -hmm. getting in the energetics of things. So we have things that let you release. We're in front of the computer all day. Right. We'll have a pass. You know, you just release and drop Is down. That a pass like holding. It's your a it's a pr it's something we do in the warm ups for things, and you can just, you know. Take a pause. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, but, but that's affecting your energetics too, because that's a huge amount of energy that goes into your eyes. Your looking at the world, the use of the eyes and the computer screen mm -hmm. all day. So, so, one more thing, then, just talk about like what the workshops are about. When people go to the workshops, what happens? So, when you go to a workshop, um, you you might have uh, something to do before you get to the workshop, where you start, for example. A workshop we're doing now in New York and we're going to do in Spain, um, you would look at the way you'd have something to, to look at in, in your day-to-day -day life, like what kind of roles do I adopt and things like that. And you do a little thinking about that before you come, a little reflection. And then um, we would do magical passes. You start out um, really learning a series of magical passes, and then we would get into um, using that energy that we redeploy or recycle or redistribute with the magical passes to look at our life and become more conscious. If mm -hmm. there's something we're dreaming, what's in the way and what's also helping us. And we would probably do some theater of infinity, meaning you get uh, currently what we're doing, you get together with a group of three or four other peers in the workshop, three or four other participants, and each one will write down a scene where maybe you got stuck in a certain persona. Maybe you have a scene where you were stuck in the trying to be the good helper, the do-gooder, we call it. And you'd write down that scene. Um, I got really upset because my boss didn't give me praise and I worked so hard and <laughs> I'm not appreciated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's my breath? Mm -hmm. And we can have laughter about it. And it's not making fun. These things can be real challenges for us, but how do we address it? We might play out that scene where we're getting upset and we notice what's our body position and what's our dialogue, what are we saying to ourselves, what's our mood, what's the sensation. Get really conscious, play it out. Somebody else might play your boss, somebody else might be an observer or they'll play the, a colleague that was watching the interaction. And then you would practice some magical passes again, get more present, get the energy flowing, then you look at the scene again and you see other things, you see other options play the scene again, now with a new intention. And you might play your boss mm -hmm. all, uh, a third time, so and then you, that way you, you get you new get options. And new ins yeah, new insights into the situation. But and you're embodying it. If and you you're embody also intending it. the future. You're calling on intent. You absolutely are. You absolutely are. And what, what's so beautiful about it to me is that if we do it with a whole being, then you're really entering into that assemblage point. It's not just a mental idea. It's much more likely to take place if you've played it out. Mm. It might be different. You'll have other options when it actually comes. It's not about trying to necessarily control every aspect of experience either, but it's about really opening up other mm. options Creating and inhabiting new possibilities them. Yeah, instead and that's of being with the body. Stuck in the things, the patterns that we're used to operating in. Yeah, and so you're asking like, well, how did I get here? Mm. Something in me knew, I had read the books of Castaneda and also knew just being in the head and trying to write from the head, it didn't, didn't work. Well, poetry. It needs to be embodied. You have to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what poetry. We That's what it is. We were a poet. I, I, <laughs> would I aspire <laughs> to poetry. I, I, I admire and I definitely, um, it's an orientation that I have. It's mm. predilection is another word yeah. to describe no. it. So if I have that predilection, let's be the best Let's do poetry the best way we can. Yeah. You know, which rather is how Castaneda wrote those books and mm -hmm. Florinda's books and Tasha's books. Mm -hmm. They're, they capture you because they, um, they were doing something else in those books. They were um, writing from another level. They would say those are dreamt books. Yeah. And Carlos, um, I, yeah. I and Rennie um, worked with. Uh, Carol Teague's on writing some things with Carlos. Oh, really? Um, like what thing? Well, all the announcements that we do on our uh. w in our workshops. 
that's uh, but Carlos's books. So sometimes we would um, work with him oh, on on, on those books. But you would see the process, um, or uh, uh, mm -hmm. he he would. Mm -hmm. and Florinda describes it mm -hmm. in one of her books right. in, the, in *Being and Dreaming*. Right, there is a whole chunk. Which, yeah, she's she was working on a thesis. Right, and so she does all the research, writes a draft, and then goes into dreaming, and the dream shows her another order. Uh, and she has to have the prowess to capture that that's what and I'm to be present. To do. Yeah. And the desire and the kind of alertness, and that's what we mean. You don't well, want to be. That's what I need to do. <laughs> Let the dream show me the order of the writing, because it mm -hmm. will do. I've had dreams in, in, in writing. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's and, it. And and that, and that order might open up other discoveries yes. also. Yes, that's so, what I need to do. Thank you. Yeah. Although there is, I mean, getting back to Castanet's book, there's a whole part of the art of dreaming that just seems to be missing. You know, like a whole chunk that was taken out. Well, the thing is, look at how much is there. No, and, there's a lot and there. And that book, that book, he actually wrote that manuscript, mm -hmm. and then he became aware. He couldn't put it out yet because uh, it, it wasn't time yet. It wouldn't. Yeah. People weren't ready, and Florinda took it and stowed it in the second attention. I know, and then it came back. And I then heard. it came back, and it does. It's imbued with a certain. Mm -hmm. You can feel it, right, when yeah, you read it. It's no, got a different sheen on it because that influence. When he mm -hmm. came and looked at it again, he that was a dream influence. He would see, and he talked mm -hmm. about readers of infinity. He he would see things on the wall, literally. And then he would write it down. He'd get it on right. paper, and then he'd put the paper out while he's sleeping at night mm -hmm. on a board. He would. And let the, yeah, and let, let Infinity look at the manuscript and give and inform him. Uh, let the inorganics look at it. Let Infinity look at it. Oh, wait, so he'd put the, the, what he was writing out. He would print out the manuscript. And let the Infinity look at what he was writing, to, and then give and him And he would get more impulses, or he's working uh, in the garden, okay, and I'm something would that. come in. He's gardening. Yeah. The trees are sentient. They'll tell yeah. you things. Wow. You know, so, uh, you know, the trees and the animals are really yeah. great allies for us because they they're are. not so caught up in the, in the social <sighs> concerns mm -hmm. and they're not, they don't have the same belief in mm -hmm. the limitations maybe that we mm -hmm. do. So. so it's great that you're connected to an amazing lineage like that. I'm very fortunate. You, well, you chose it. You're not just fortunate. You, I chose you, it you when it was. It chose you, right? It chose me. I chose it when, it, when, I, when the opportunity came in front of me. Mm -hmm. I said, Florinda's like, Carlos has some movements. She's at the Sisterhood Bookstore. And I said, that's what I'm looking for. I knew it before she even and that completed was the sentence. 20 something years ago. Yeah. Wow. And it continues. You have to keep choosing. Keep choosing. Well, you keep, keep choosing. Opening. You're you're right in there in the organ. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Aie you, Alan. Th thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to um, leave us with? Well, it's. I'm really grateful to mm. talk with you. I'm grateful. I feel like um, being in New York is part of the, the gift of talking to you. That like mm. you embody a lot of what. Mm. At least to me, and to my New York, is really a great place mm. to learn about how to get along mm. with each other. Yeah. City. Sometimes we think that that uh, shamanism and infinity is only when we go on retreat out in the woods, and that can help us give a restart if that's mm -hmm. an unfamiliar environment. That certainly there's a lot of consciousness, mm. but we can do it right here. It's happening where all we the are. time, isn't it? It's everywhere. Is it your we practice are. 24 hours? It is. So yes, yeah. you're aware. 20. You never well like take some time off. To uh, well, I have, you know, a persona. I have, you know, assumptions about myself that I'm working on all the time to release. Also, right. so I can get just as much as anybody else. And, and one no, thing, no, but you, it's in your yeah. awareness. I'm it's saying. in my awareness, and I know yeah. that there's nothing random that's coming to me. Right. It's all very right. specific, and it's all directed. It's all an opportunity. It's all west messages. You know, you can tell. Oh, all the time. If you're going down the wrong path, it's weird. That car is going really slow in front of me. Why? Because uh, I'm going. I don't need to go that way. Um, you know, you're going this way. Shoo, there's a police usher escorting you. I'm serious. You can I see it. Sometimes it is that obvious, and sometimes it's, we don't see it so clearly. But or that's sometimes you have to work for some things too. I mean, you, that's that, right. Uh, and, uh, that's absolutely and right. You it's don't know what it is. Is the path just not the right, or do I really have to put more energy? How do you know? Uh, well, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you don't. You just have to and sometimes it. it's about being 
okay with not the not knowing and that if we can not resist the state of not knowing, right, not fight it and mm -hmm. put up, s use energy in that, then the door will probably open for but us. But if you're getting insights on a path that may be loose, then I feel for me that's still feeding me in some ways even. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're getting insights, can you say more? Like no, you're getting insights? Like the, even though things may be going slow, if you're still... Hey, there's cycles of time. There's cycles. Uh. Things go in cycles, right? Carlos talked about, and he, I think he wrote about it in Active Sight mm -hmm. of Infinity, this phenomenon called cyclicity. Yeah. And he would talk about beings that are connected on a strand of energy that we can exchange awareness. But cyclicity also means if I have a project it's going to go through cycles. And sometimes something like that book, Art of Dream, it wasn't ripe yet. Right. And he could get really, he got upset really at the time, but then he saw later, oh, it, it's not quite cooked yet. It's and it's not awesome. ready. There's there's elements that got to come together that we don't know the whole picture of what wow. they are. But infinity and there's does. Seasons. Infinity does. And, and there's also just times for things to ripen mm -hmm. and times to let go. There's times to really be active and searching and in the action. Mm -hmm. And then there's times to hold off and just receive, right? And rest. Mm -hmm. Our culture is like we're taught, you know, and this is a city that never sleeps, right? On, 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 on. But I think we're waking up. You can see there's more of a consensus. We need to also take time. Right. To, to be off in the sense that we're resting, re winter time, mm -hmm. going more inside. So project can have its winter time too, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or cycles and, um, yeah. and... and it's springtime. And... Um, I like it all comes down to the path with the heart, doesn't it? It does. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm Alan Steinfeld with Ni Nayi <laughs> Perez and the Magical Passes and Clear Green. You can go find out all about this at the Clear Green web website, which is featuring the work of Carlos Castaneda. Thank you for watching. I'm Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. Check me out at newrealities.com.